Let's explore this target income question. Okay, so there's the question on the top part of the screen. It says, Wilson Company reported the following results from the sale of 5,000 hammers in May. Sales were 200,000, variable cost 120,000, fixed cost 60,000, and net income 20,000. Okay, now, if you look in the table, what I've done is dropped in all of the information that was given in black. Everything else we're going to calculate, I'm going to use this uh, sort of off red color here. Okay, so then it says, assume that Wilson increases the selling price of hammers by 10% on June 1st. How many hammers will it have to sell in June to maintain the same level of net income? All right, so first off, the formula for target income in dollars is fixed cost plus the target income divided by contribution margin percentage. You could also calculate the target income in units by taking the same numerator, fixed cost plus target income, and divide it by contribution margin per unit. Now, in this problem, they did say that the net income was 20000 I think technically we ought to be calling that operating income, but we're ignoring taxes. So for now, net income and operating income are exactly the same. All right. So 5,000 units, sales are 200,000, variable costs are 120. When we subtract variable costs from sales, we get contribution margin. So I did that calculation right here. All right? Just take the value in C12 minus, it would take the value in C11 minus C12, that's contribution margin, 80,000. Now, we can calculate the contribution margin percentage by taking contribution dollars and dividing it by sales, and that comes out to be 40%. They gave us fixed cost or 60,000. So if we subtract the contribution margin from the fixed cost, uh, we come up with a net income of $20,000. Okay? Now, let's figure it out on a per unit basis. They gave us sales of 200,000, and they told us that the sales were 5,000 units. So take 200,000 divided by 5,000, and we know that we're selling it for $40 a unit. The variable cost are 120,000 divided by 5,000 units. And then we could take 80,000 divided by 5,000 units or simply subtract the variable from the sales. Either way, we'd get the same $16 per unit contribution margin. And then if we divide that out, we should get 40%, just like we did in the under the dollars column, right? So whether we do it in dollars or units, it's still a 40% contribution margin. All right, so then what does it say? It says, assume Wilson will increase the selling price of hammers by 10% on June 1st. How many hammers will have to be sold in June to maintain the same level of income? All right, now we could just solve this directly by going to the formula, but what I'm going to do is fill in the numbers that we know based on what they're asking for, okay? They want operating income or net income to be the same. We know fixed cost won't change, right? So that's going to be 60,000. So therefore, we know that the contribution margin um, will be the same as well because operating income plus fixed cost will get you the contribution margin. Now, we can force it back, we can force into this in a little bit as well. All right, what do we know? We know they're going to raise the sales unit by 10%. So I'm going to take $40, and I'm going to increase that by 110%. That gives us $44. OK, so now that we've calculated what we know is going to change in June, we can work through the target income approach. So I'm going to go over here and do the calculation right here. It says target income in dollars equals fixed cost plus target income divided by contribution margin percentage. Actually, I could do it right here because that's what we're going to calculate, the target income in dollars, if we chose to use this formula first. So I'm going to say, take this total of the fixed cost plus the target income, right? And I could have just taken the contribution margin way they worded this, but we're going to use the formula as it's given to us. Fixed cost plus the target income, and I'm going to divide it 
by the contribution margin percentage. Now at this point we hit a snag because we don't know what the contribution margin percentage is, but we can calculate it. So I'll stop that formula and I'll say, well we only raise the selling price so the variable cost has to remain the same. Right? It's still going to be $24 per unit. There's no change in our costs. And now I can calculate the new contribution margin. 44 minus 24 is $20. And then calculate the new contribution margin percentage, which is now 45%. But I think this is a rounded figure. If I were to show you, yeah, we actually have a few more decimal places. Okay. So now I can go back and use that formula and say, take the fixed cost plus the operating income and divide it by the contribution margin percentage. When I do that, I get 176,000. Okay, if I know my contribution margin is going to be 80,000 and the sales are 176, I can simply force the difference if I wanted to complete the variable cost, but I really wouldn't even need to do that. At this point, I knew that we had 176,000 in sales and 44 per unit. I didn't have to complete the variable cost. I could just simply divide the 176 by the 44 unit and determine that the answer that we're looking for, and I'll bold it here, was 4,000 units. That's how many hammers would have to be sold to maintain the same level of net income. Okay? Now, let's assume instead you wanted to solve this with target income and in units. So here's what you would do. You'd backtrack and you'd say, well, wait a minute. We still have to know that the sales are $44. And we, had, and we would know 24 would remain the same. Why is this 44? Because it had increased by 10%. The cost did not increase because we're only raising price. So we still would have to calculate contribution margin and contribution margin percentage, but actually we only need the contribution margin per unit. And then you could solve the units sold directly by again taking the fixed cost plus the target income. In our case, the target income is the operating income or the net income. And then divide that by the contribution margin per unit, which is $20. And when I do that, I come up with the same 4000 Okay, so you could solve it with either one of these formulas. And then if you wanted to complete the schedule, you would just multiply the 4,000 units times your per unit cost, multiply the 4,000 unit times the per unit cost, and um, you'd still be able to put together the contribution margin income statement. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.